So um, we're going to um, take another uh, leap, geographically speaking, um, and uh, ask for a presentation from our wonderful Dr. Jean Bosco Nayanzima, who spoke last year and is going to bring us up to date a bit on what's been happening with his uh, programs in Rwanda. Uh, so please, uh, we welcome you, Jean Bosco, and let me know when you want me to put your slides up. Thank you, Gerba. And uh, thank you to, to you all for being here with us. Um, I was born and raised in Rwanda near the Democratic Republic of Congo in the Rwanda genocide in 1994. I fled to Democratic Republic of Congo. My eyes have seen or evil things that a man can see on this earth, including thousands of corpses strewed all over the roads of people dying from hunger to diarrhea to dehydration or simply killed. Back home, a lot of places were lifeless with a lot of devastations. I had lost a lot of friends and family members, myself, I miraculously survived from a gunfire. In fact, one day, as I was walking with uh, two friends, one of them was shot dead, but I survived. All that painful experience engulfed me in a severe trauma with existential crisis. I wrestled with three questions. Does God exist? What is the meaning of life? And what is my purpose in it? I struggled with those questions for seven years. Fortunately, I met a spiritual mentor who introduced me to the practice of Tai Chi and Qigong and also accompanied me in the work of awareness, which helped me to heal from my trauma. This will actually inspire me to create, to develop a community-based social healing model that you are currently using for trauma healing and addressing other common mental disorders through Ubuntu Center for Peace. In Rwanda, around one in five people are suffering from trauma and 50% of genocide survivors live with trauma and common mental disorders. And not only people are suffering from individual traumas, but also from collective traumas with poverty, a lot of uh, you know, sexual, like uh, domestic violence. And this has crossed the borders to DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, and other countries. Next. Unfortunately, only 85% of those who need mental health care services don't have it. Next. Ubuntu Center for Peace that I co founded is here to help bridge the gap and we integrate breath, body, mind practices with collective narrative and rituals. And these are delivered through 
community healing assistants whom we recruit from the communities. We train them in BBM and in group facilitation um, and also with other techniques. And then they go in the community, recruit those who are suffering from who have symptoms of trauma and common mental disorders. They form healing groups of around 20 people and they go through a healing journey for 15 weeks. And then after the graduation, therapeutic groups transition to long-term support groups that we often call self-help groups. And they do additional activities, including solidarity work, loan circles, and even cooperatives. Last year, so, so far we have trained uh, over 232 community healing assistants who have reached 5,000 people. And last year, Dr. Gerberg and uh, Brown trained six people of my team who are uh, in turn trained 32 community healing assistants who are currently, who have joined the others to serve over 2000 people. Um, and so last year we have uh, with 32 community healing assistants, we have served, we have reached around 2000 people and uh, we have conducted you know, uh, pre and post intervention uh, study and results are amazing. So we have depression decreasing from 62% to 19%, anxiety disorders decreasing from 62% to 16%, and PTSD decreasing from 17% to 4%. Uh, I just want to show you uh, the figures. So as you can see, uh, the figures on depression. Here, um, you can see that the magnitude of depression, like the severity of depression has shifted from uh, the right to the left, compensated to non and minimal depression. And for a lower degree of severity, this implies that the intervention has significantly and positively impacted, you know, participants' uh, life situations. Next, it's the same with anxiety. Next, and uh, this shows the impact on PTSD, which significantly reduced from 17% to 4%. Next. So here it's about disability. And if you look at the figures, um, the lost days due to disability has decreased for almost half as in like a, in a post uh, intervention as compared to the pre intervention where people were losing almost a week for um, uh, within a month next now um, this shows how uh, children from parents who were uh, affected by mental health uh, they are school attendance improved. And you can see how the dropout from the school reduced from 1.1 to 0 0.25. Next. Regarding the domestic violence, you can see that the figure suggests a decrease in domestic violence from 25.2% to 9.8%. And also 
there was improvement in uh, terms of uh, consultation with, within married couples anytime they had issues uh, instead of uh, using violence. Next. And so also the study, like the evaluation showed us that there was a reduction of people living in conflicts from 17, 18% to 5.3%. Uh, and these people have reconciled. But we also have recorded different testimonials and stories where most of people were seriously depressed or uh, who had gone through trauma for over 27 years, would you say, I was almost dead, but now I'm alive or those who have been in conflicts within families or separated, say one family, one couple said, we were in hell for seven years of fight and separated, but now we are in honeymoon. And also children went back to school and parents are very happy for that. But also the local authorities are proud of this approach because there are a number of issues that they have been struggling with, especially conflicts in families. Um, uh, and now they say, okay, we are really happy that, you know, the time we have been lost, losing because of these conflicts and we were not able to do uh, to help them. Now we are very proud of you that you are helping us resolve, resolving them. And uh, three weeks ago, one lady who is a genocide survivor told us, I want to testify that BBM works because I'm alive and I can sleep now and I have reconciled with my husband. I mean, she said that BBM has helped her to become softer, which has uh, also impacted on her husband. Next. Now, our ambition is to reach at least four countries within the next 10 years, including Rwanda, Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, and South Sudan. And we want to train over 26,000 community healing assistants who can serve over 1.5 million of people suffering from trauma and common mental disorders. So we need your support as we spread our breath revolution work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jean Vasco. And again, my apologies for the slide glitching, but um, I think that given all the things and all the obstacles you encounter, this was probably a very minor one. Um, your courage, your persistence through so many extreme uh, situations, uh, surviving the genocide and all of that, uh, you are really a treasure for your country and a treasure for us. So we hope we can continue uh, to support you and the development of more and more teachers um, and spreading to other countries in Africa. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your support. And thank you for all you do for us. <laughs>